Hmm. How to learn English? Uh, this is a question that you may be thinking if you are studying English. Um, I have some questions. I wonder if you want to be able to use English. And also, I wonder if you want to study English. Now, my feeling is that many students do want to be able to use English, but most people don't want to study English. So this is your problem, really. How, how do you learn English? Because if we can become able to use English without studying, I think lots of people will be very happy. So, um, two problems. First of all, what does learn mean? And secondly, what is English? Uh, the second question is a more easy question. We can look in a dictionary. We can see English is a noun. And there are kind of two meanings for English. One of them is a language. So now I'm speaking English. Uh, I was reading this book. This is a book in English. It's also um, a subject. So what do you do today in the classroom? Oh, I've got English. So I think that the language and the subject are not exactly the same thing. And I think when people say they want English, what they want is the language. And often when people say they don't like English, what they're talking about is the subject. So um, next question, then we are talking about a language. And what is a language? Uh, this is uh, not really a simple question. There are different ways of thinking about a language. We can think of a language as a means of communication. We can think of it as a symbol of identity. Um, we can think of it as a way to organise thought. Uh, so a means of communication. If you want, you, you're hungry, you want to eat something, you go to a shop, you ask for something. That's language is being used for communication. Um, identity. If you um, if you're from Osaka, probably you speak Osaka Ben. And the reason people from Osaka speak Osaka Ben is a, a means of identity. It shows I am from Osaka. I am not from Tokyo. Now I'm from England. I'm from the UK. Um, I don't speak American English, I speak British English, and not because I don't like American English, but because I'm not American, I'm British. And in fact, I'm from Yorkshire, and I will speak in Yorkshire English, and because I'm not from London. But that, so that's a, a symbol, that's showing who we are. And another another feature of language is... Um, it's very difficult to think without words. So if I was to ask, what did you just eat in your last meal? And if I asked you to think about that without using any words in your head, I think you'd find it difficult because when we think, we are thinking in a language. So a language is a way that we organise thoughts and ideas. Uh, so here are three different things that a language is. Um, what, what do you want a language for? What do you want English for? Do you want English for communication, for identity? Do you want English for thinking? Which, which do you think, which of these do you think is the most important? Um, I would guess for most students, um, English is for communication. People want English for communication. Maybe for thinking is maybe the second answer. Uh, being able to have a second language or another language is sometimes helpful if you're thinking about problems. You can sometimes get a different perspective thinking about a problem in a different language. Um, I guess identity, you probably all have an identity already and don't need English for your identity. 
Uh, for me, it's probably the other way around. Um, identity is probably the most important. Um, if I don't have an identity, I don't need to think or communicate. And um, if I want to communicate, I need to think first. So for me, probably identity is the most important thing, followed by thinking. And then communication is not the most important factor. Um, so anyway, this is um, these are things to think about. Um, the next thing to think about is, do you want to learn or acquire English? Now, learning and acquisition are not the same. Uh, so this is based on a, a theory or hypothesis called the input hypothesis, which was developed by Stephen Krashen in the 1980s. Uh, and he hypothesized, he thought that learning and acquisition are two different things. And I'll just explain, you probably have an idea of what learning is. Uh, you may not be so clear about acquisition. So just to give you a few ideas of the difference, um, learning is what we do in school and acquisition is what happens at home. So um, when I was a baby, when I was playing at home, I was acquiring English. I went to school and I studied French at school. Uh, so that was learning at home was acquisition. And when we learn something, a lot of the time we're looking at the form we're looking at knowledge. So we're in language, we're learning grammar, we're learning tenses, we're learning structures, subject, verb, object. We're learning vocabulary. What is this word? What does this word mean? How do I translate this word? Acquisition is more about what you can do. So can you read a book? If you're watching TV, can you follow a story on TV? If the telephone rings, can you pick up the telephone, have a conversation? That's more about acquisition. Um, learning is conscious. So when we learn something, we decide, I must learn these 10 words, or I must study this grammar. Um, acquisition is subconscious. So small children, small babies, don't go around thinking, oh, today I must learn the past tense. It doesn't happen. It's all happening under the consciousness without thinking. Um, this is a model of learning. And this is a model of acquisition. So how do we how do we acquire English then? Well, according to the hypothesis, we acquire language when we understand messages in the language. And that's all. It's very simple. A couple of amazing facts. Um, language acquisition is effortless and language acquisition is involuntary. So no energy is required for language acquisition. No work is required. Small children and babies don't try to pick up their first language. They don't work at it. And also, there's no choice. Almost 100% of babies will acquire their first language. It's very unusual for people not to pick up their first language. So, um, just a couple of other points as well. Um, acquisition does not lead to learning. So you can acquire a language without consciously knowing the grammar. And if you speak to children, if you ask what's the difference between the past tense or the present tense, if you ask a Japanese child, 
what's the difference between wa and ga, then um, they probably have no idea. And uh, the opposite is also true. Learning does not lead to acquisition. You can study lots of grammar, you can learn many words and translations, but if the telephone rings, someone is speaking, you may not be able to answer quickly and easily. So what do you need then? What do you need for this acquisition? Uh, very simple, in one word, you need input. You need language to go in. And if enough input goes in, then acquisition will happen. Uh, your brain is made to acquire language. It's very, very good at acquiring language. Almost 100% successful. Where does the input come from? Well, one source, especially for native speakers, is talking to people. Before you're born, as a baby, your ears start working before you are even born. So people start to listen, people start to get input from people talking from before they're born. And as they get older, they hear more, more language goes in. So talking to people is the number one for native speakers. One important point about this is that it doesn't matter if their English is not perfect. So if you think about children, especially small children, when they start to go to kindergarten, they're playing with other small children and they're not speaking a perfect language. They're not speaking perfect Japanese. They're not speaking perfect English. But after a few years, their language is fine. So it's not a problem whether the language is perfect or not. So if you're talking to other students in English, you don't need to worry whether your English is not perfect or whether their English is not perfect. The important thing is you do need to be speaking English. Another great source of input, if you're in the middle of Japan, it may be difficult to find people to talk English to. Um, it's not difficult to read, and if you can find books or if you can read online, you can read anywhere. Another great source of input is watching movies. Um, today, we have the internet, and it's possible to watch movies on the internet in various different ways, as well as DVDs and the cinemas if they're open. Um, one important thing with movies is you need to make sure that they're easy to understand, as we'll come to later. Uh, so here's a question for you to think about. Here are some things that happen in language classes, in English lessons. Uh, some of these are learning activities. Some of these are acquisition activities. Um, please have a think and try to decide which ones are learning, which ones are acquisition. So we have translating a passage into Japanese, reading a story, doing a vocabulary test, watching a movie, listening to a teacher's instructions in English, listening to a teacher explain something in Japanese, chatting to your classmates in English, checking spelling translating a Japanese passage into English. What do you think? Are they learning or acquisition?